This webinar is called The Cycle of Freedom, The Story Behind It. Let me introduce to you Professor Alexander Fraser Tyler, also known as Tytler. He was a Scottish lawyer, judge, writer, and historian, and he served as professor of universal history in Greek and Roman antiquities at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. He had thoughts on pure democracy, and he believed that pure democracy was a chimera, that is, a monstrous creature with parts from multiple animals, and that pure democracy would devolve into mob rule. But here's a quote attributed to him that's frequently heard. A democracy cannot exist as a permanent form of government. It can only exist until the voters discover that they can vote themselves largess from the public treasury. From that moment on, the majority always votes for the candidates promised the most benefits from the public treasury, with the result that a democracy always collapses over loose fiscal policy, always followed by dictatorship. There's a second quote attributed to Dr. Tyler, and it's this. The average age of the world's greatest civilizations has been 200 years, and then he introduces the sequence that we've been using as the cycle of freedom, that civilizations move from bondage to spiritual faith, to courage, to liberty, to abundance, to selfishness, to complacency, to apathy, to dependence, and then from dependence back into bondage. It's frequently called the fatal sequence. So Dr. Tyler, although he had great insights into history and democracy, and made some observation consistent with these quotes, there's no reliable record that has yet been found of Alexander Tyler actually having made these remarks. Researcher Lauren Collins wanted to get to the bottom of this and found that the fatal sequence had not only been attributed to Dr. Tyler, but also had been attributed to Alex de Tocqueville, Benjamin Disraeli, Arnold Toynbee, Ezra Taft Benson, Davis Paschel, and even Bernard Weatherhill. But even his research could not uncover any of them having said this, and so in his uh, quest for finding out the answer, he concluded the authors were probably most likely not famous people or respected scholars, but rather just private political thinkers who got their words in print and whose words then happened to strike a chord in others. Well, this sounds rather dismissive. I mean, what would we say about, say, Abraham Lincoln, who is self-educated, or George Washington Carver, who is a child of slave parents and ended up presenting his science to Congress, Steve Jobs, who found an apple out of a garage, Bedouin Shepherds, who found the Dead Sea Scrolls. So just because you're unknown doesn't mean you can't have great observations. Thousands of other of non-credentialed men and women have said and understood wise uh, things and done courageous things. So lo and behold, his research led him to this individual, Henning Webb Prentice, the president of Armstrong Cork Company, CEO of a company that made corks. We know it today as Armstrong Flooring. This sequence that we call the Freedom Cycle was first known in its appearance in a 1943 speech he gave called the Industrial Management in a Republic. And here's a conclusion we can draw the greatest insights do not have to come from some supposed expert. A secondary conclusion is that those that are business leaders in the marketplace and workplace can have great insight and influence over society if they just have the courage to use it. Excerpts of his speech reveal great insights for today, and I encourage you to watch the video that expands his remarks. This is U.S. Civics Training. Thanks for watching.